episode of Moving Out. Well done with Mark. Hey. Yeah, you may recognize Mark from such episodes as Small Bike Stuff, Scarlet Masters, and uh, anything that I've done that's been on a farm and recorded in the past two years has basically been at Mark's um, what, uh, property that Mark has access to. And uh, today we're in an Oldsmobile Super 88. Now, 88 is not the model year. Um, there'll be some people watching this that know these. There'll be some, a lot of people watching this that don't know much about these um, these cars. But basically, this is a 62? 60. 60, 1960. Okay, sweet. So this is a 1960 uh, Oldsmobile Super 88. And they made this shape from, what was it, late 50s through to the early 60s? Yeah, um, back in the 50s and 60s, they changed every year. Okay. So every year was a different model. That was just what the Yanks did. Yeah, and this engine that powers this thing, oh, we've got some gravel. Not what we expected, but hey, that's okay. Uh, we can take this thing on any surface. It is rather low. But we'll go through some of the specs to start the video off with. Um, it's a 394 Rocket, and that's uh, an Oldsmobile exclusive engine, or did that go in other brands? Nah, it's an Oldsmobile. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. It's a 6.5 litre, I believe, something around that V8. It's got a smidge over 300 horsepower, about 230 kilowatt approximately. Uh, and obviously front engine rear wheel drive, so an FR layout. Um, has it got the four barrel carb in it or does it? This one has been upgraded to a four barrel okay. edel brock carburetor. Okay. This model would have come out with a four barrel Rochester. Okay, Yeah. awesome, that's fantastic. So I had a look at the options that they came in. They came in supposedly a two door hardtop, a two door coupe, two door convertible, and then a four door hardtop, four door sedan, and four door station wagon. And this here, I would guess this is the two door yeah, this is what's known in the Oldsmobile range is the uh, Scenic Holiday Coupe. Scenic Holiday Coupe. So it's, it's official name, but if you were an Impala, you would call it a bubble top coupe. Okay. That's and what most people know it as. My father, when I was growing up, had an old, and, and in the world of V8 American cars, well, it wasn't even a V8 when it came out, classic American cars, it wasn't very well respected, but it was an old rambler, but everything that I see about uh, old cars, just the amount of glass. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like being in a glass house. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. Uh, this one does have air conditioning, yes? yes. Yep, yep, okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's got power seats. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And we've got uh, power brakes. Yes. And power windows. And power steering. And power steering. Yes. Does it have the moving steering column or is that fixed? No, no not that this was, one. Yeah, so, that, so that, that's why you've got the power seats. Okay, yep. To so bring you to the column. Awesome. Whereas my, um, my Cadillac limo the seats don't move so the steering wheel comes to you yeah that's awesome yeah i think 63 they got rid of it but oh, behind the speedo which i'll put up on the screen now there's a little bar they call it the uh the speed bar and supposedly green is stationary or low speeds uh yellow is moderate red is highway speeds and then if you go over 100 mile an hour supposedly it just goes black yeah yeah and that's about all the stuff that I know about this vehicle. What, like, how long have you had it for? Do you, do you remember what year you got it? I um, don't know the exact year. It's around about seven or eight years I've had it. Yeah, yeah. I've bought it pretty close to this condition. I've done a few things to it. it originally had a sunroof in it when I got it. Yep. Which I wasn't a fan of. So okay. I um, hunted for a panel beater for a few years. Yeah. Until I found someone I was happy with to do the job. Yeah. And we took the sunroof out and we uh, metal flake painted the roof to match the so, custom paint job. Okay, so the paint on the roof is a little bit newer than the stuff on the body. That's obviously not stock at all. No. No, they no. didn't come out with flames from the factory. No, no. <laughs> they should have, but they didn't. Yeah. And no. and uh, this was done in the States. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah most of the customising was done in the States. The custom interior, this would have normally had vinyl seats. Okay, yeah. Uh, vinyl dash mat. Um, had a lot of the chrome and badges removed it's had the door handles removed so we've got poppers on the key you push a button the door pops open okay uh louvered hood yeah that's um that's not factory that's okay so is that like a something someone's made custom from an original hood uh yeah so yeah. Yeah, there was a hot rodding trick back in the 50s and 60s where yeah louvers were it so yeah. someone's obviously uh taken a liking to them it's hit and miss i do like the look of louvers but i wouldn't do it personally as a customising touch on a car like this. Yeah. It does weaken the, the strength of the bonnet. You can bit. see it fluttering a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Not much, but a little bit. It's definitely yeah. noticeable. But it does get a lot of comments. Yes. Yeah, if you like them, you love them. Yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that's one thing that you notice when you see this car is that, boom, it just takes your eye and uh, captures your attention and you just start to notice. I feel like, look, I've known you quite a few years now and every time I see this car, which is quite often, I tend to notice a new thing. Yeah. And, and 
uh, for the first couple of years of you owning it was basically just exterior and then eventually I learned about the inside and how everything's electric which to me is mind-blowing because my last vehicle was a late 90s Toyota yeah. and it didn't even have any of the features that this thing did. No, no, and this was all uh, factory options in the 60s. Yeah, it's insane. So yeah. what didn't this come out with from the factory? Because there were... What, what, uh, um, the one option which I wish it had was there's a, there's a clock you can get in the back of the driver's seat so the people in the rear can tell the time. And which is an important thing. No, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's a very rare option and yes. if you can find one of those cars, yeah. apparently you should buy it. Yes, okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I see. Um, yeah, that's about the only option that this hasn't got. I think it's got most of the uh, most of the boxes ticked. Did you have to um, do much to it in your, like, have you had to do much to it in your ownership? Has the aircon not stopped working or? Ah, uh, the aircon could be regassed, but um, I, I never use it anyway, being a pillarless coupe, you just wind the windows down and enjoy the fresh air, you know? Yes, that's one thing. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, obviously they've got to have a really strong body and chassis to, to support that, but there's no pillar here in the middle. So when I've got this window down, which is electric, but I'll leave it up because otherwise the wind noise. Um, yeah, there's just a big flat hole in the side of the car. Yeah, and um, being left-hand drive in New Zealand, that actually gives us really good visibility. It's, uh, yes, it's, that, quite, it's quite handy. That's yeah. a very good point. Yes, obviously, I'm sitting on the right-hand side of the car. Mark's on the left. So, yeah, it is a left-hand drive vehicle. And in New Zealand, uh, we drive on the left-hand side of the road. Our cars are all right-hand drive generally, but there are some exceptions with the classic uh, imports. And I think you can do something about brand new imports as well, or do you have yeah, to? There's, yeah, they give a certain amount of exemptions a year, yeah. but it has to be a classic type of car, like okay. a, not your run of the mill, it has to be worth it. Just being inside this thing is super impressive. But um, is this your, this isn't your first V8, I mean I know right now you've got uh, the Holden 1 tonne, yep. I don't know if there's any other V8s, the, uh, there the is. Cadillac, yeah. there's a Cadillac as well, which yeah. is, um, we'll get to that someday. Well, how old were you when you had your first V8? Uh, I would have been in my late 20s when okay. I had my first one. Uh, yeah, what, were you, what, what was your first car then? First car was a Nexu 1 Tirana when I okay. was 16 years old, so yeah. I've always had the car bug. Yeah. Always been a bit of a GM fan. Yeah. Holden's, uh, Cadillac, Oldsmobile, yeah. Chevrolet. Yeah, I haven't had a great deal of cars. I've got a bad habit of buying them and not selling them. Yeah. Because I like them. So, yeah, so yeah. whatever you have just tends to stick around. Yeah. No, that's super cool. Were you on the lookout for an Oldsmobile Super 88 for years? No, Did it just no. come up? Did you suddenly get into a position where you were like, oh, I'm going to get an old car now. What's around? Like, how did yeah, it? It was um, a friend of mine in Matter Matter had it previous and okay. uh, I saw it 12 months previous prior to buying it. Yeah. And I thought, well, it's um, got a certain something. You yes. Know? Yeah. And then it, I sort of said to him, oh yeah, if you ever think about selling it, let me know. Yeah. But he didn't. Okay. It, it popped up on Trade Me and I thought, oh, you busted. I think we need to go and look at this. And I wasn't actually looking for another classic or anything like that, but I was in a position where I could purchase one. Yeah. And it was a bit of a spur of the moment thing. We went in, and my young fella went over and took it for a drive and I put the money in his bank account that night. Fantastic. And um, yeah, the deal was done. So, so yeah, so to sum that up, it was more, You'd known this car existed and it was awesome. Yeah. And it wasn't what you necessarily needed or wanted in life, but when it came up, you're like, well, that's not a normal opportunity. No. They don't come up every day. Uh, I uh, it, should jump um, on it. It kind of appealed to me because it's it's not an Impala, it's not a Camaro, mm. it's not a Mustang, it's just a little bit different. Yes. But it has a certain look to it as well, which I like. I like the 60s. Cars. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. I really, really like the. After the 50s, they've got rid of all the. Exorbitant fins and things like yeah. that. We've kind of settled down a little bit, but yeah. haven't quite gone square. No. Yeah, it's um, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful shape. And to preface the whole New Zealand old school V8 scene or classic car in general scene, um, it's quite big. We're yeah. only we're only a country of five million people, but uh, we grew up on a healthy diet of Holden versus Ford for the general public and um, kind of general consumption. There was quite a bit of British stuff coming up through the 60s and 70s. Yep. Um, and then the Japanese, uh, they kind of dominated the market, probably from what, they had the New Zealand assembled Japanese cars through the 80s. Yeah, late, then, late 70s, um, the Chrysler Todd group started being a big change to Mitsubishi. Yep. Okay. As a kid growing up in Morrinsville, I do remember going past the car yard and seeing 
Valiant and Mitsubishi's on the same yard at the same time. Yeah, I don't actually know how to take photos, I just use the video <laughs> all the time. So we'll just meander on down that yeah, way. Yeah, let's we? go for it. The V8 scene has been pretty intense. We have some massive events. There's one pretty local to us. It's about an hour and a half, two hour drive away called Beach Hop. And that's a yearly event when the world's in a normal standing order. And uh, that's in a beachside town called Whangamata. And you have thousands, thousands of cars that's going correct, yeah. going to that event. And no, it's not on the, um, you know, it's not quite the size of a an American show. You know, it's not any, we don't really have a SEMA or anything. We, no. But we have a lot of classic meets. Yeah. And uh, even, even in this day and age, I mean, last weekend, was it? You were off on a yeah. random drive that just got announced on Facebook and 20, 20 classic cars turn up. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. There's, there's still a healthy scene. Yeah, COVID has um, kicked it in the nuts a little bit and people are just itching to get back out. Like, yeah. As you say, last weekend, a random run that I went to, there was another one that went to the Waihi RSA, which was an inaugural event. Awesome. They, they were expecting 25 cars and 140 showed up. Yes, I actually saw a post about that. Yeah. Um, people, the Stragglers, are, Stragglers Hot Rod and Custom yeah. page, yeah. And it, they got a little bit overwhelmed. They, um, but it's not a bad thing. It's good for the um, for the sport, and it just shows that people are itching to get back amongst it. You know, if you've watched my videos, I spend a lot of time in Southeast Asia. Uh, Mark's most recent decent trip um, before the world kind of shut down was uh, the USA. Yeah, uh, half of Route 66. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So Route 66 was always massive for me growing up. I mean, my dad kind of instilled the whole classic rock V8s. And yeah, and we were days out of booking our trip back to continue our journey on Route 66 when COVID. So you will finish the, tri the yeah. trip eventually. Oh, yeah, I've been saving since the first lockdown to, yep. um, to get back there. Yeah, but can you tell me a little bit about that trip? How did that come up? Because that was you and friends, and you know, it's yeah. it's a rare thing, and you know, to be, I guess what I'm trying to say is generally, you go out and travel with your mates when you're young. When you're older, you generally tend to do it with families. How cool is it that you got to go yeah, with yeah. your mates and go see some classic stuff in the I've um, sort of prioritized buying property and, and assets and, and whatnot, so I didn't do a lot of travel as a young fella. Yes. And you did one trip to Japan in high school. That's correct, yeah. 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 Itching to get back, by the way. Yeah. If anyone wants to sponsor us, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll yeah. gladly come. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and I've got a friend that travels every two years, and he's spent a bit of time in America. He said, why don't you come? Yeah. So um, I was in a position where I, we didn't have to backpack. We, we did it pretty lush, actually. We stayed in nice hotels. We bought a couple of cars yeah. while we were there. At the start? Uh, we bought one at the start, we drove that for a while, Yes. Um, that was a 72 Plymouth big block. So, yes. Yeah, we had our airfares and our first hotel booked, Yeah. and we just winged it from there. We just drove until we were sick of driving and found a hotel and um, took turns at driving and if you saw something you wanted to stop and look at, you just said let's stop and we stopped. And so how long was the trip in total? Two, uh, three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah. yeah. Three weeks. So you did Vegas, I think you went in... Yeah, we um, we actually had tickets to SEMA. We went on behalf of um, a mate who's, who publishes New Zealand V8 magazine. Yep, yep. So you can't... You have to be invited to SEMA. You can't just buy a ticket. No, and I didn't know that. And then when you told yeah. me that... I've always followed, say, uh, the guys from Roadkill when they yeah. would, like, assemble a car at SEMA or That's something. Right, and, yeah. And then that was cool, but I didn't realise that, you know, there's thousands of people watching, yeah. but you can't just turn up. No. No. So that was super lucky, yeah. managed to wing your way into there, and um, that would have just been an eye-opener in itself. Oh, yeah, it was huge. took three days to see everything. Yeah. And it's basically um, all the automotive producers um, out there showing their wares. Yeah. And what they all do is they try and build a, a cool car to have on their stand. It's a bit of a pissing contest, really. Yes, but, yeah. Um, but there's some pretty cool stuff there, and yeah. everyone goes all out for SEMA. You went to Counts Customs. Yeah, we did um, uh, Counts Customs. Chip we Foose. Went, yep, we, we met Chip Foose. Uh, met the Martin Brothers from Martin Brothers Customs in Texas. Yeah, that's it's just a dream trip. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, the Yanks are a little bit apprehensive. They don't approach you, so I just took it on to go up and start talking to people. And yeah. as soon as you started talking, the first thing they'd say is, 
where the hell are you from? And yes. What are you doing here? And yeah. as soon as we told them, oh, we've come from New Zealand and we're driving Route 66 to SEMA, they were like, oh, wow, you better come and check out our shop, you know, yeah. and check out our cars. And That's incredible. It was just um, so cool. You, you had to make the first move, but yeah. um, like we went to um, Classic Auto Industries, which was we knew through the overhauling program with Chip Fu, so we had to go there and check that out, and we're shocked, of course. Yeah, so that's just a preface that shop. That's a um, that's a massive parts wholesaler. If you're from New Zealand, we've got Super Cheap Auto or Repco. Yeah. Um, and you know, we sometimes use Rock Auto online. Looks like there's a bit of a bike race. Yeah, happening. I think just, we're going to get right amongst this, aren't yeah, we? Yeah. But yeah, anyway, um, Classic Industries, we uh, went in to buy stuff, or yeah, we did. We shopped up there. I bought a whole lot of um, parts for this. And, yeah. Lots of pieces, and um, of course we walk in the door and who's there buying parts but Chip Foose. It's so cool. So just um, went up and shook his hand and of course he says, hey, where are you from, what are you doing? And yeah. He goes, well you better come around and check out my shop, it's a uh, 10 minutes drive from here, so we got a Chip Foose tour of Chip Foose's workshop, which was really cool. That's amazing, and you can actually go to Chip Foose's workshop on your own accord, can't yes. you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, between the hours of 12 and 1 every day they do tours. Okay, yeah, but you got a tour from Chip himself. Yeah, now that's cool. And to quantify that for me, that's like turning up to Southeast Asia, going to Thailand, and being invited to the Honda factory, yeah, and getting a tour with with you know one of the guys that works there themselves. That's really incredible. Yeah. And um, what did you did you buy a car on that trip or not? Um, uh, was it hard not to if you didn't? Yeah, I took money to buy, and we did buy one, but um, we actually. We put videos of the cars of us driving them on Facebook, and basically we'd sold them before we left America. People, yeah, we did it as a an exercise to make a bit of money, and um, yeah, we. As soon as someone said, "Look, I want to buy that car," we asked them to put a deposit in our bank, and we stopped driving it there and then. As soon as the money showed up, we sent it to our shipper in LA and cool. jumped back in a rental and carried on. You know, that's quite a common thing as well in New Zealand. Not not exactly the way you've done it, but. Um, it's not uncommon to see a, a single person selling, say, three or four classic yeah. cars at a time because they've gone over, yeah. bought a few, and bought them back, and, and they do sell for a premium over here. And yeah. I mean, for example, what do you think something like this? Do you have any? It's hard to know because we don't live there. If we're in the states right now, do you think this would be worth, you know, over twenty thousand US? Yeah, or, easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back, um, it was three or four years ago when I was last over there, and it would have been. They've just prices have come up a lot even since then. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's random over the last five years how the classic Japanese, the JDM market, has almost overtaken the American classic market. Because, I mean, let's go back and say to the 90s and stuff like that. Did you kind of rubbish Japanese stuff? Like, were you in. Oh, the... yeah, you know, back in. Because I grew up in Holdens and whatnot. So yeah. when the, the Mitsis and that first came out, it was Mitsu shitty from that. But once you, you know, you actually owned one, it was like, oh, well, this has got, all, you know, it's got all these features that. My old Holden didn't have. All right, I'm about to go down the main street, and then I'm probably going to turn this camera off and just get all my other uh, uh, shots of the vehicle moving. So they'll be interlaced, and you've probably already seen them by this point. Um, but yeah, go through the main street with this pointing at us because it's just kind of cool to go through this main street where everyone is. I'll point this camera out the window and get some more shots, and then uh, that'll be us. So thanks, Mark, for letting us come and hang out in this uh, Oldsmobile. No worries. And uh, I'll make another video one day of hopefully me sitting in that seat. We, don't, we won't do it today because then it's all in one video and I can't make an extra video. <laughs> it's all about stretching out that content. Um, but yeah, it's been really, really awesome. Cool to, to get a bit of an insight into this kind of caliber of vehicle, I guess. Culture. Culture, absolutely. That's the word I was looking for. And oh, look at that. Yep. 